Hey guys, it's Kyle here with uh, partlord.com. <laughs> um, really, I'm just a guy with the garage and I happen to make uh, an oiling kit for an S300 series turbo. So pretty much today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install um, the oiling kit that I offer on a GE motor uh, for the S300 series Borg Warner turbo. And I'm going to try and keep these videos short so they might be kind of mashed together. Um, so they might kind of go from one to the next a little abruptly. Um, Hopefully it's not too distracting. You know, I'm really going to try and focus on the content. Also, my garage is a huge mess. You know, I've had a lot of motors in here lately. I've had to drop a motor in a car, and now I'm working on this motor. So there's just stuff everywhere. Um, but anyways, I'll get right to it. I think the first thing we're going to start out with is, assuming you already have a manifold on. If you want to know what manifold this is, this is just a cheap eBay manifold. And I want to be honest, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. I only paid like, I think 120 130 maybe even less. And back in the day, I used to get a drift motion manifold, which is probably the same thing, but it did not have these little extra supports here that have been welded in place. There's even some here, and there's even now one on the wastegate. I, that was not there before um, when I used to get these from drift motion for a couple hundred bucks or whatever they were. Anyway, so eBay manifold for trend scroll for GE. First thing we're going to want to do is get the turbo clocked. All right, so I got the, the turbo installed. Um, now, I've already clocked this one. I kind of got ahead of myself. Um, I already did a lot of the work before I thought of recording the video. So your turbo is not going to look like this, but this is how you're going to want it clocked on your 2JZ motor um, to fit inside like a SC300 or a Super or whatever. You're going to kind of want the compressor housing down here at the, or the compressor outlet down here about the 8 o'clock region. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have to clock the turbo when you get it to do this. Um, not only to get the compressor outlet in this general area, but you also want the oil inlet pointing straight up. Now it can be, it doesn't have to be perfect. This can be like maybe within like five or 10 degrees, no big deal. I think some people even do a little bit more than that. I try and keep mine straight up. So anyways, how do you clock it? On the Borg Warners, really, you just loosen all these bolts on the compressor housing. Um, you don't gotta loosen them a lot, just enough so that they kind of back away from this little plate here. At that point, you can then turn this entire assembly to where you want it. And again, you want it like in the eight o'clock position. So I move back here, you can kind of see where it's at. And then go around and just kind of tighten these all back up and try and do it at uniform so that um, you're not tightening one side more than the other. Because if you do that, when you go to try and spin this, you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear contact, you're gonna see contact. And you can actually, if you do it really bad, you can get to the point where this thing's not going to even want to spin. Same thing with the turbine side. So the turbine side, you, there's four bolts back here. And you're going to loosen these again just enough so you can rotate it. Um, and now you're not going to rotate this part. The part that rotates is actually the whole middle section here. So like I said, you're going to want to loosen these up so you can move this CHRA, this entire assembly. Um, you can actually just kind of grab it here if you want once this is tightened down. And this will allow you to turn this oil inlet upwards. And so again, you want it pretty much straight, right? You don't want it to the side too much or else you might have some problems uh, with, with oil going inside the, inside the turbo. So anyways, once you get done getting it at the point you want, just go back through here and tighten these again. Really uniform, try not to tighten more than uh, one side more than the other. And at that point, you'll pretty much be done clocking the turbo all right so moving on um one thing i want to say is don't install the turbo because we're going to have to take it back off to install a couple pieces so just do not install it you can mock it up like i did just don't you know tighten anything down because you're just going to be wasting your time um anyway so next part come down here to the pretty much where the, the oil drains from the turbo and goes back into the pan so you can see i already installed the fitting i mean very simple just two bolts i mean i can show you the fitting real fast so this is what it looks like off the car. This is the fitting you're going to get with the kit. And you can see how it's got a really nice thick o-ring on it. You don't got to deal with any type of paper gaskets. Um, so yeah, I mean really it's just you throw it on the oil pan and you tighten the bolts down. Um, like I said, I don't know the torque spec. I mean I just put them on pretty snug. And at that point that's pretty much ready to go. All right, one more point because I forgot. So yeah, this is a GE motor, but this is a GTE uh, rear sump so that's why this hole is already kind of pre-drilled for me it's already got the threaded portions in here 
So, you know, you're going to have to deal with that if you're using your GE pen. Um, you know, the kit does not come with these bolts. These are actually just uh, bolts I had laying around that I used to put in here. Um, so, again, the kit will only come with this section here, this little flange um, with the O-ring, but it does not come with the bolts or any way to actually, you know, drill into here or anything like that. I'm hoping in the future, um, if, if enough people buy it, I can start providing the tools necessary to do all the work yourself on your GE pens. Um, but for right now, again, it's just the flange. Moving on to this step, the next thing you need to install is the fitting for your oil feed. Um, let's see, here's a picture of it right here, not installed. I mean, that's kind of hard to see. You know what, you don't really even, I don't need to show you that. I can just show you right here. So, as you can see, the bigger part of the fitting goes into the turbo, and the little top part, that goes to your actual feed line. And you can kind of see how I did put some uh, thread paste on there. Some people are going to say don't do that. I don't see why you can't. I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. Now, one of the things I will say when you install this is, one, don't crank down on it extremely hard because this, this fitting, you know, it's not made out of the strongest material in the world. You could crack it if, you, you know, if you're torquing it like 50 foot-pounds or something crazy. So really just hand tight. You know, use your fingers, put it in like that, and then take a socket wrench. And it's going to be a 5.8. 5.8 socket. And then just what I like to do is just kind of put my hands like this and then just kind of give it a nice turn. Now, this one's already tight, but by doing it this way, by kind of having my hand like this, I can only put so much torque on it. Now, if I were to grab it down here and really crank on it, I could probably destroy that fitting. So just nice and snug, you know, nothing crazy. Right, and then again with the sealant, um, you know, I kind of rubbed it into the threads a little bit. Um, but what I did make sure is that it did not get into the hole, um, because at the bottom of that fitting, there's going to be a hole for the oil to drain through. And just make sure you don't get paste inside that hole, because then it could possibly get circulated through your turbo. And while I doubt it would actually really damage anything catastrophically, you know, better safe than sorry. Just try and keep it on the threads. If you do get in the hole, then just clean it out a little bit. Uh, no big deal. But again, just make sure that there's none of this paste inside where the oil would flow through, only on the threads. All right, so second step is getting your other fitting that has the square O-ring on it, which goes to the bottom of your turbo drain in here. You want to get that connected to your oil drain hose. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter really what end you connect it to because they both have the same type of 45 degree fitting. <clears throat> so, pretty much you want to get it like this. So, it's kind of straight and then the fitting's kind of got the hose angled about 30, 45 degrees. Um, so that when you're putting it on, it's kind of installing like this. But don't worry too much about that because these do swivel. So, really just make that connection here with the hose end the fitting and then the the flange itself um, i used a one and one eighth wrench to tighten these together i just got them pretty snug i didn't do anything crazy with them so get that nice and tight and we'll move on to the next step all right so you have to install this onto the ca to the turbo oil drain portion um, using the two bolts and washers that i supplied um, I like to put this all on at once. I don't like to do it separately. Um, I mean, if you can, you can do it. You're, you can do it that way if you want. Up to you. Um, this is now. This is going to be the annoying part. So once you actually get this all torqued down, um, and again, not too much torque, just make it nice and snug. You don't got to put a lot of effort into it. Now you're going to fit this onto the header. And now I've already done this, and what's happening is is that this, even though I put a slight curve on it. It's not, it's hitting the header, it's hitting one of the runners on the manifold. So what I'm going to have to do is actually turn this a little bit more towards the compressor. So I'm going to do that now, and then we'll go through a fitment test. And again, this is probably going to be the most annoying and time-consuming part of this, um, just because you want to make sure that this isn't contacting one of the runners on the turbo manifold. All right, well, after messing with that for a little bit of while, you can kind of see how I eventually got it. So I kind of have the drain coming out at a 
I don't know, I guess that's like a 35, 40 something degree angle. You know, it's more facing the, it's more in line with like the compressor outlet. Um, so that's how I do it for these. It just really depends on your manifold, you know, like how you have to position it. You know, this one's not really, like I said, this isn't installed yet. Um, but you can kind of see how close, how much clearance I got. There's really not a lot of clearance there. It's barely getting there. I actually had to double gasket this up. And when I torque this down, it's probably going to get a little bit lower. It's going to be extremely close. Um, I might even have to get a, I'm a spacer, but anyways, depending on, you know, what manifold you're using, you might not run into that. You might, um, you might have to double gasket. You might have to get a spacer. All right. So I wasn't thinking. So now you can see I got a lot of space here. And I'll tell you how I did it. All I did was I just clocked the CHRE a little bit so that the oil inlet was just maybe another couple degrees over this way. And that gave me enough space. So you can do that. I guess in that case, you don't need a spacer or anything. My bad. I don't know why it slipped my mind. So no spacer needed. I'm going to put just one gasket in there. And it's literally just going to go right into here. It's going to plug into the fitting you installed on your block or your pump. I'm sorry, <laughs> your pan. And yeah, you're just going to take a size one wrench and turn this till it's nice and snug. Make sure all the fittings Make sure it's screwed into all the fittings. It should be, um, you don't got to get extremely tight. You know, just, uh, again, just snug. Everything just has to be snug. You know, you don't have to, like, torque it like 100 pounds. I mean, just snug. That's enough to seal it. Um, now, again, you can turn these. So, if this was loose, you could turn it. But because it's tight, it's kind of stuck in there. But if you need to turn, whoops, if you need to turn uh, the orientation of this line or the top line up here, you can just loosen this and then you can have all the, you know, free play that you need. And then you just tighten it back up and then it'll lock it into place. But this is kind of like how I have it. And this is the nylon hose. I actually like the nylon because it's, it'll protect everything. Um, it's pretty flexible, so no issues. Um, makes it easier for install, especially if you're doing it on the car. The nylon's especially easy to install. I do have a stainless So here's the stainless version, and you can you can order that if you want. A lot of people prefer the stainless. That's actually why I use the nylon, so I have extra stainless stock. Um, but I'm actually a big fan of the nylon. I don't mind it. Um, I'm surprised more people don't order it because, again, you know, it doesn't look too bad. And, again, it's really easy to install on the car. I mean, if the motor's out, you know, the stainless is just as easy. Um, but, yeah, that's how, I, that's how I install the line, and... That's actually pretty much it, besides hooking up the oil feed. All right, just two things real quick. When you're putting those bolts in to the turbo, turbo oil drain flange, um, you know, feel free to use Loctite. I use blue Loctite. Um, I wouldn't use red, and you'd probably get away with not using Loctite, but just to be safe, maybe go ahead and put some blue on there. And then also, really, your oil inlet for the turbo you really just screw it on, again this comes with the kit you just screw it on the top here um, get it hand tight and then take like a I think it's a 13 or a 14 get it nice and snug then you come over here and this is a 36 inch line by the way um, just come over here and you can go to your union bolt or whatever you're going to use and you'll be ready to go that's really it Again, I'll have these on my website. I got I got GE and GTE versions of this oil kit. Um, the GTE comes with a couple different deals, a couple different fittings because um, of the way the block's oriented. Because it has the two oil feeds over here, you got to plug one of them off, and you have to have a fitting for the other. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Again, you know, partlord.com. If you have any types of questions, you want to throw them in the comments, and I'll put the links to the products in the description as well. So yeah, I know it was kind of quick and I wasn't crazy in depth, but that should be enough to get you going. So I'll talk to you guys later.